Well, I've always described the core dynamic of the use of nonviolent resistance this way. Um, to you, quote Desmond Tutu, when people decide they want to be free, then it's a question of the action that they take. And when they decide that action is possible, uh, the very act of protest or resistance, the very concept of resistance, means that one is going to stop you're going to stop being inactive. You're going to take action of some sort. You're not going to accept the idea any longer that the injustice or the oppression that you face uh, is permanent or represents something uh, that you can't oppose. Um, when this moment occurs, uh, Vaclav Havel describes that as moving from living within the lie that um, the power available to your oppressor cannot be challenged, living within the lie that injustice might even be good for you, as every oppressor tries to argue, and moving to living in the truth. The truth being, this is a system of oppression. I cannot be who I am supposed to be as a person unless I say that, unless I call it for what it is, which is to say a system based on lies. When that ex existential shift takes place, then individuals acting together take away their cooperation from the system. When they begin to do that and engage in uh, using proactive tactics like strikes and boycotts and civil disobedience, they then begin to challenge the legitimacy of the existing order. Challenging the legitimacy of the existing order alerts many other people to the injustice which can grow the movement, which can attract external, external support. And as the movement enlarges, and as that resistance applies more pressure to the existing system, then the cost of maintaining the system goes up. As legitimacy goes down, the cost of maintaining the system goes up. And when you challenge a statist, an authoritarian, or any kind of unjust system, which is usually maintained by arbitrary force, what you do when you're doing that challenging is literally to make it more expensive. You put stress on the cost model, and you put stress on the people who are enforcing its orders. Legitimacy goes down, costs go up, and then the people who are serving that unjust system begin to think, well, wait a minute, this isn't exactly working the way it used to. This setup isn't you know, really producing benefits. You know, for the people who I report to, you know, and I'm having to work longer hours, or I'm a policeman on the street, you know, or I'm a clerk in this uh, bureau, and the bureau is shutting down, you know, one day a week for whatever reason it is, and then everybody starts questioning whether the whole thing is sustainable. When that moment arrives, that's the inflection point, and then from that moment forward, it will gradually become less difficult for the movement or the campaign to increase its activity, keep up the challenge against the legitimacy of the system, keep the costs rising for maintaining the system, and often then what happens, and none of, a lot of this isn't visible, certainly isn't visible to out, the outside world and to most journalists, but when that begins to happen, the power available to that system begins to dissolve. Its ability to wield power begins to come apart and become and begins to weaken and then you begin what begins to be visible is that shift in power that may not be exactly a soundbite for you but that's the core dynamic as i understand it